Hey everybody, it's Wes with Fundamental Games. I learned something today and I just really wanted to share some time saving if you have these same tools that I do and haven't been using them. And so the tools I'm going to talk about involve uh, InDesign and Google Sheets as well as images that you may have for whatever game that you're putting together, whether it's a prototype or a full-fledged final version. I've done both and work with InDesign quite a bit to try to make this happen. So I'll do my best to toggle between the screens using my OBS recorder, but if I miss something I do apologize because uh, it's, not it's not jumping the screens automatically, I'm not sure why. Anyway, uh, data merge using InDesign. Uh, what I'll show you first is that uh, I have made a file of uh, ex example cards here and um, in here if we look through I made a, a sample deck of cards so just doing all the suits clubs and adding some jacks and queen and king images stuff like that just to kind of test it out myself and then if I wanted to I could data merge that and create basically a full-fledged deck of cards um, so if we take a look here this basically is a full set of cards here and I could do a file export and save that as a PDF test so we're gonna say a yeah, deck test one so this is one I already made but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from scratch and make a pretend card game or set of cards and I'm gonna show you from start to finish how I do that um, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to flip screens and, and start with something else. But here's what the end result will be like when we get to that point. Let's, this is um, basically a full set of cards put together through Adobe InDesign and the data merge functionality with Excel. And this is something that if I had made cards in my old way, it took me 10 times as long to do this exact same thing. And that was astounding to me. And why I haven't learned this before, I honestly don't know. But we're going to close that, uh, and we're going to close that one, I'll save whatever it was, but we're going to start a new file. I'm going to save it as, we're just going to call this, um, die in the, we're going to use my die in the dungeon images. So die in the dungeon, data merge, um, demo, we'll call it. Okay, so what, what has to happen is I need to create uh, a template. I, I need to create a file that data merge is going to work with because right now I'm basically going to be working with a blank slate. Um, we'll just kind of hide these two layers here and bring up a blank slate. We don't have anything. We don't have any data. We don't have any images. We have absolutely nothing. This is just a two and a half by three and a half card template and we'll switch the view into normal mode here. So absolutely blank. So We'll go back into OBS. We're going to change my window capture to be able to show you my Excel screen. So there you go. You should be able to see Google Sheets online amongst uh, all kinds of other things that I'll close here. We'll just focus on this. So untitled spreadsheet, we're going to call this die in the dungeon. Um, what are we going to call it? Data. We'll call it the data file. Why not? That's what we're doing. And so when you're the reason I'm using Google Sheets instead of Excel is it lets me use uh, an at function that for some reason Excel doesn't, and I don't know the workaround yet, but I'm sure I'll figure that out later. But what we want to do is we want to build a database of cards that we would have in a game. And so we're going to do that with the name of the card or creature. We're going to say whether it's a hero or... Um, creature, I guess. Uh, we're going to give each card a, uh, you know, we're just going to say we're going to give it a combat value. We're just making up a pretend card game. And then we're going to make up a pretend rule, rule or we'll call it an ability, and then we'll have um, an icon, A, icon, B, in case they happen to have icons. All right, so that'll be our kind of our sample, and then we're also going to have an at illustration, we're going to call it. So there we go. That's the title of our charts, the titles of our columns. And what's going to happen is each of these columns is going to have an entry, and that'll be a row. And for every single row, what it's going to do in InDesign is it's going to create a unique card based on all the data that's in here. 
So let's uh, start with the illustrations first and then we're going to work from there. And the reason I'm doing that is I already have a bunch of illustrations to draw from and I'm going to teach you another little trick here. So if I go into my um, folder and I don't think my, let's see if I can make a window image show you my folders because I don't know if I can do that. Uh, da, da, da. So I'm going to add a new window and try to show okay and there okay so now you should be able to see this little folder that i have open and i'll close that afterwards but basically what this is doing is i'm showing you where i'm going to get my images from so if i go into my data merge folder i saved all of my art into a single folder called the the art folder and you might have this as a list so it's easier to see the words but what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, basically highlight all these. I could click and drag or I could control A. I want to grab all these and I'm going to hold the shift button and press right click and if you see on here there's an option to copy as paths. So if I just copied it, it wouldn't copy all my paths, it would just copy the titles. I want to copy as path and what I will do from there is close this, go back to OBS and make sure I close that window um, and we're going to go into here and where it shows illustration I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste um, or control V and so there's all the paths so instead of me trying to figure out what the path name is and where it's saved this gives me the exact path for every single art piece that I put on here uh, so that was step one getting my illustrations kind of uh, linked and put on here it's not a direct link if I click it it doesn't take me to my computer site but it will be a reference when it goes into the data merge all right, so step one, getting my art. Um, now I'm going to give each of these cards a name. That name is going to be what's going to appear on the card when I kind of link it. So this one is going to be my diamond. This one is going to be a die rake. And you can see I'm pulling that name from here, but I just have those are the names of my creatures. So die splicer beast, um, die golem, dwarf, oops. You can probably fast forward through this. I'm not the fastest typer, but uh, I'll try not to take too long. Um, eye roller, cobalt, uh, warlock, do, 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 rogue, tombstones, the undyed knight, troll, oh, wounds. Um, the warlock is actually the. Uh, what's that master cleric called? I can't remember. We're just going to call him master cleric because I can't remember. Warrior, wizard, barbarian, uh, bard, cleric, uh, dilatinous cube, and I don't even know what that image is. Uh, let's go back here and check. Do, do, do. Art folder. What's that other image supposed to be? A die master. Oh, the die master. Okay. Die master. Oops. All right, so I've got all my names of my creatures and heroes. Now, hero or creature. So what I'm going to do here is uh, say whether it's a creature or a hero. Very simple. And I'll put in caps just for something different. So if it's a creature, 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 hero. Hero, and I'm just going to copy these and get them all pasted. So, creature, 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 bum, 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 bum. creature, and we'll call him a creature. And then heroes, and get all that copied. So there you go. Heroes and creatures. So that's the the type that it's going to be for this pretend card game. Combat value is how strong they are. We're going to put in a, a, a combat value. So let's say the combat value for, uh, I'm making up numbers here because this game doesn't exist. It's um, a different game with these creatures exist, but I'm um, just having fun with this. So let's just uh, 5, 6, 3, 8, 3, 2, 4, 0. Because the kobolds, why would the kobold have combat? Come on. Uh, Warlock, 6, Rogue, 5, Tombstone, 7, Troll of Bones, he's 
not tougher than a dragon. Put him at a six. Cleric, five, warrior, six, five, eight, two, three, four, and the die master is a ten. I'll put him at nine. Keep it all single digits. All right, so there's a combat value and then an ability. I'm going to use uh, a text ability for this, and I'm just going to use uh, a makeshift value. So um, we're going to call this flame attack, um, dice vomit, dice placer beast, transport, um, dire and golem will be noxious fumes, dwarf will be explosion. Elf, ranged attack, eye roller, eye beams. Again, just quickly putting together a fake deck here. Cold, sneak attack, warlock, um, fireball, why not? Rogue, backstab, tombstones. Um, I don't know what to do, yeah, whatever. Uh, sword swipe. Troll of Bones, Smash, Smash, Master Cleric, Heal, Warrior, Slice and Dice, Wizard, Magic Key, we're just making stuff up. Um, arg, Bard, Music, Cleric, um, Protect, Dilatinous Cube, Absorb, and Die Master. Uh, we're going to say their ability is to mind control. All right, so there we go. We've got all that. Now, icon A, icon B. What I'm going to do here is, again, reference back into my, um, let's recapture that window, the folders window. And I'm going to go and go into hero images, go into one of my files where I have some icons. And we're going to say that we're going to use an attack icon so that I don't have to drag it in there. So we're going to say that that's the might icon. So what I might do in here is I would look at the properties and find the path. So if you didn't know how to find the path otherwise, um, I could do that. And the only other thing I have to remember is the name of the actual thing. So might icon, it is case sensitive. So I'm going to close that and I'll go back into my file here. We're going to say that the icon here is going to be backslash might icon. All right, so we're going to call that icon one, might icon, and we'll slide that over so you can see um, all those are might icons. But inside that same folder, I have um, other icons. So what I could do is for certain cards, I may reference a different icon. And you won't be able to see this because I don't have it on here right now. But um, bum, 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 icons. I'm going to also grab an icon called, instead of might, I'm going to grab the icon that says magic and an icon that says agility. Okay. So let's say for the dice placer beast, instead of a might icon, I'm going to use a, a magic icon. And we're going to copy that and we're going to put that on a few others. So we're going to put that on the Warlock tab magic. We're going to put that on the uh, Master Cleric. We're going to put that on the Wizard and the Bard and the Cleric. All right. And then on a couple of these, we're going to say maybe the Elf. Instead of Might, we're going to change Might to Agility. So Agility icon. We're going to copy that. And we're also going to give Agility to the Kobold. Agility to the rogue, agility to the, uh, that's good enough, just for something different. All right, so there's icon one. And then icon two, I'm going to look back at my folder and I'm going to copy a different icon. You won't see it on the screen here, but uh, I'm going to pull an icon for health. So that's called health icon. So in here, I'm just going to change. Uh, this B icon, oh, copy this, paste it here, and call this health icon. And this health icon will be the same on every character. Just drag this down. Okay. So what I've done is I have made character names, types, combat values, ability, 
an icon, a second icon that's specific to health, and then a unique illustration. And that is everything I'm going to do to build this pretend deck. I don't want to take too much of your time. What I need to do is export this. So I'm going to file, download this as a CSV, a comma separated value format. It will not work as an Excel format or any other format. It's got to be in this format. I'm going to call this die in the dungeon data CSV file. So that's all done. And we're going to come back to this after, but I will close this window and we will take a look at um, bum, 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 InDesign now. All right, so we're back in InDesign. Now is where the magic happens. So what do I want to do? Well, first thing I want to do is in my windows, there is something called um, utilities and then data merge. And when I click that, what it does is it gives me a window called data merge here. And data merge is where all the magic happens to automate things. Things This deck that I'm about to build may have taken me many, many hours to do with very fiddly moving around to make sure everything matched. Um, now it is so much faster. So what I need to do is from this hamburger menu or, or lined menu here under the data merge tab, I'm going to click this and I'm going to choose my data source. My data source is going to be the one I just made in here, Die in the Dungeon data. So that is the whole spreadsheet that you saw me just make. And what you're going to see is that the headers of the columns that I had in that spreadsheet actually appear right here. And that's very important. Okay. Um, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add something to my layer here. I'm going to add a frame. Um, and so that one I'm just going to add for my computer because you don't have to do everything from uh, data merge, especially if you're doing outlined frames or whatever. But um, it can be handy to do most of it in that format. So I'm just going to grab a card frame here. Here we go. To have fun with this pretend die in the dungeon card game I'm putting together. So there we go. We now have a card frame. Uh, I'm going to lock that. And then we're going to go into here, and now we're going to um, start figuring out what to do. So the first thing we want is um, actually maybe in this layer, I'm going to layer in a, a box that will be the character name. We're going to put it up here. And that's just going to be a white box with a black frame. And we'll give it a little bit of a stroke. And let's make that stroke. Um, yellow. Why not? Okay. Uh, weird. Stroke's not appearing. I don't know what I did there. Sorry. Uh, let's try that one more time. We want a rectangle. Ch fill white. Oh, you know why? I think it's uh, stroke red. I don't know why the stroke's not appearing. That's really odd. Oh, there we go. It was hiding behind that. Uh, oh, I see why. My card frame is not opaque. So let's get rid of. We're going to change that out. Sorry about this. Here we go. Ability cards. We need a PNG. Let's try that instead. Okay. That should work better. Now I can fix this. We'll give it a yellow frame just to look gaudy. We're going to curve that frame. Put this little box here. And we'll put this up here. So this is our card title up front here. All right, and then we will go ahead from there. Let's try to center that a bit. Actually, that center, I just don't think that centered. There we go. Um, so let's uh, lock that, lock that, and I'm going to do one more new layer. And now where you're going to see how the data merge makes sense. So first thing we're going to do is the title. We're going to create a text frame here. So this is where the text will go. Right now the text is empty, and what we're going to do is we're going to put in the name of whatever file we have. Now, you're not going to be able to see the name because 
the name is linked to that online file right now. But what we can do is we can take a preview look at it to see what the name is. What happens is once you click preview, it's going to show you a preview of every uh, row that you have in place. So the die rake, the die splicer beast, all of these names are now automated in here. Now I don't really like how it looks right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the character style. So instead of the generic one that I have in there, I'm going to go with skill sands, and I'm going to center it, and I'm going to bring the middle down a bit, and I'm going to increase the font size. So now what that'll do is, not only for that title, but for every other title that replaces, it's automated, they're all in here. Now if the title were too big, it might not um, cover properly, but I, I think all my titles are small enough that they now fit in this box. Now you'll see there's a couple little frames that don't belong in there. That's because my screen mode is in normal. If I do it in preview, that stuff disappears. But we're keeping it in frame mode so that you can see that frame. And if I took off preview, all you'd see is the word name again. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is add a image. So what we can do is um, we're going to create a square. And actually, I'm going to hold shift. And that should make it a perfect square. And we're going to make the square this big. We're going to make a real big image. We're going to pop that square Try to make it center, that purple line, or pink line says it's center. And what we're going to do is turn that into the illustration. So now we have an illustration, and if we click on preview, the first one pops up, and then the next one, and the next one. So we have a pretty cool overview there. And um, maybe what I want on that illustration is I might want to add a, a frame around it. So I could actually, on top of that, add a frame. And maybe that frame is going to be a uh, dark gray. So let's uh, do that, make the stroke a little bigger. And there's our frame for the diamond. Okay, that frame will be on every card. Once we go back to data source, we'll see that. So there we go, we've got a frame for our card. Um, and then we're going to put in, what else do we have? We have hero or creature. So what we could do is below that, over here we can put in a smaller box, another text frame, and we're going to call that the hero or creature. Um, actually I'm going to control Z. I don't think I did that very well. Creature. Okay. Uh, I'll do I think I put the text in the wrong spot there. So we're going to do that again. There's our frame box. We're going to go back to data source and we're going to call that hero or creature. And we're going to change that text as well. We're going to keep a consistent text format, Gil Sands, but we're going to make this a little bit smaller because the creature type doesn't matter as much. Eight is probably the fall smallest font you should use on a poker size card, in my opinion. And uh, this time we're going to put the font over to the right and um, we'll just bring that up a little bit. So that there tells us whether it's a creature or a hero. Good to know. All right. All right. So the next thing I want to do on here is I would like to add the icons or the, the powers of the creatures in this, this imaginary card game. Um, so again, uh, what I had to do is I'd, I'll go back here and show you. I had to close and re fix something. I didn't want to waste your time showing it the whole thing to you, but you'll see here if we go back to the Excel file, what I had done wrong is uh, these before had just been listed as icon A and icon B without the at symbol. Without the at, at symbol, it only recognizes it as a text file, and so it wasn't working. So I had to go in here um, after fiddling around figuring out that that was the problem. I added these at, so this at this location, and then it drives it as an image. So if you come across that hurdle, if it's not labeled on the column as an at, it'll only pull up the text of whatever is written in the cells below it. Uh, but I solved that problem. We'll close that and bring back these window captures here. Go back to InDesign, and now that that's fixed, we can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a box, and we're going to put that on the bottom left here. And we're going to say that's where our icon is going to go. Let's put that here. Um, we'll make it uh, a square again here. 
If I hold shift, it'll make it square. And we're going to replace that with icon A. So that's going to be the icon that represents what type of attacks they have. In this case, the Die Master has magic. But if we flip it to another preview, the Dilatinus Cube has agility, the Cleric has magic, etc. Whatever I pre-classified. So that is their special ability. And then what I want to do is I want to add a number on top of that. Now, what is that number going to be? Well, that number is going to be the combat value that I already wrote in the chart. But I want to have that as a text layer. And I'm going to put that text layer... Um, where do I want to put that? You know what, let's put a little box. Or we'll even, let's try a circle. We will try a circle on the layer down here. Maybe a little bubble to the right. So we're going to put a little circle there. And we're going to fill that circle with white, and we'll do a little stroke on the outside of red. Make it a little thicker, so that stands out. And that is going, right now it's over top of that. We're going to drag it below. Uh, we want to be over tombstones. We want to be over text frame. There we go. And now we have a little place to put our number. So let's put that number there. And now we're going to put a little frame in here for the number. So this is where the number will go. And that number is going to be in the data merge. We're going to call that the uh, combat value. All right, but that's not good enough, right? So we can see there it's, it's small, it's to the left. So we're going to highlight that. We're going to center it. And we're going to make the font match up with the... Um, Let's go with uh, Montserrat, sure. Montserrat, we'll change it to bold. Make sure that number stands out. We'll increase the font size. And then we could even slide this over just a bit. So uh, just like so. So now we have a number there. And so whatever creature we happen to have, that number is going to change to reflect what that creature's ability score was. All right. And then uh, what else do we have? So we have name we put on, we have hero creature we put on, we have combat value, we have icon A, icon B is their health. So let's um, make a, another box similar to this size. We're gonna grab this and just kind of copy that same size box there. We're gonna call that illustration B, which is the health. But we're gonna move that over and we'll put that up here. Um, actually, let's make it a little bit smaller, transform scale. Health can be a little bit smaller because we all have the same health pretty much. So there is health. And uh, maybe what I'll do is I will copy this and pop this up here. And layers will drop that. Uh, maybe that way we'll drop that as well in size. So scale that to 60% and slide this in the corner here. Okay. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. That's gonna be their health. And uh, we will draw another little text box in here and throw it up here. We're gonna switch it again back to Montserrat, the font we feel like using. Uh, we'll put this as a medium size and then we'll grab it out of our data source again. So data source, we're gonna, we don't actually have a health column, do we? So um, if I put it as a thingy here. Um, might be too big, I'm not sure. Yeah, number was too big. So we can reduce the font size so it'll fit in there. Change font to 6, change the font to 12, sure. And then we'll kind of put it up here. So right now, we'd have to go back, and I'll show you how to do that once we finish up the abilities. And we'll add in a new column and show you how that updates. But right now, if we look at any creature, um, every creature's uh, ability for health is going to match ability and health scores are going to match. And we would want to have those different maybe in this particular game. But right now they're the same because we didn't actually reference a health file. So we'll fix that. And then the last thing we're going to add on this file is a um, 
another text box, and that's going to be our ability. So let's make a nice big box here. Let's um, insert ability. Let's change the font type again. So instead of Minion Pro, uh, for actual words, we're going to use Gil Sans. Let's make the font size a bit bigger so the ability stands out. And we're going to center that ability. All right, so this Stylatinus Cube has an absorb feature. And maybe just to add a little bit of flair to that, we're going to create a rectangle under the ability and throw it in here. So let's make an ability box. Let's fill that with um, maybe a light blue. Change that opacity nice and low, just so it's behind the ability color. We'll give it a stroke of dark blue. Increase that. And then we're going to take this rectangle and bring it underneath. All right, so the rectangle is now underneath. Maybe we actually you know what? What we could do is keep the uh, opacity up. And just for fun, uh, here, let's grab that again. Let's change the whole box blue. Uh, and let's play with the font instead. So what we can do is with the font, we can change the font to be a white font. Um, Uh-oh, no, that's not what we want. We would want to highlight the font and change that um, fill to white. Okay, and maybe we'll bold it as well. Bold, yeah, let's go with the medium. Okay. And we'll lower this just a bit, get it centered. And we'll get this centered with that box. All right, so now we have an ability box. And again, just like everything else, um, all of the pages will reference that character. Um, so right now, the, the only thing that's not matching up is a health column. So we're gonna fix that. Um, what I'm gonna do is I will go to OBS. We're going to show you online again hopefully that's working and what we're going to do is we're going to add in a column so let's put it here insert one left we're going to call this health and then we're going to give each of these creatures a health rating as well and again i'm just going to fly through and make a bunch of numbers up um, um, four eight three nine, three, one, five, one, four, three, eight, eight, five, seven, four, nine, one, three, not 85, 5 and uh, 8, sure. So we've added in some pretend health numbers in there. And what we want to do is file. What we're going to have to do is download and override our current CSV that it's extracting all the data from. We're going to do that again and override this file. Uh, so now it's overridden. And we'll shut off the window capture there and put this back on. So now that we're back in InDesign, what we'll see is that link again has been changed, so it needs to be modified. So you see that little 7 up there? Uh, before we modify it, what I'm going to do is flip through. So 5566004444, five, six, six, zero, zero, four, four. so they're all identical. We're going to go into that link. We're going to double click to update. And now, if we scroll through, we should see, um, turn off the preview, redo the preview. So six, six, five, five. Um, oh, because right now this is actually referencing the um, combat value. We now want to reference it to health. So if we reference it to health, we should see uh, an improvement there. But uh, we have to fix the font size again. So we're going to change the font. And so let's get this fixed up. So the numbers are appearing there. I just have to kind of recenter and 
not sure why we oh, must have actually made one of those in 89. Or actually, you know what happened? And we'll show that to you. If we put the screen mode back to um, screen mode normal, if we take the preview off, we'll see that um, you actually can't see it on here. We'll make it wider. So it's bringing combat value and health together. That's why there's an 8 and a 9. So that was a mistake on my part. So what I would want to do is actually go into text and I would want to delete the combat value part out because all I really wanted was the health. And if I do that and then I go back into preview mode, now we're down to just the 9. So it wasn't that the box was too big, it's that I was actually putting both to value values together. So, um, so we could actually go back and increase the font size again and try to put this in a place that we like. So now we have health values for these characters. Barbarian 9, 4 and 5, Warrior 4 and 6, Master Cleric 5 and 5. So there you have it. We have created a whole bunch of cards. Not the prettiest looking cards, but if I were making a prototype, these would certainly be uh, serviceable if I knew what Smash Mash was. Um, we can change the view back to preview mode so you can see what the actual cards might look like. Um, or if you um, wanted to see what it looked like with the bleed, there is a bleed option as well if you had a bleed set on your document. This one I don't think I have a bleed set right now. Um, but it's not done yet. Right now, if you look at it, we still only have a single layer. And if I were to export this, I'd only get whatever the current layer is based on what page of the data I'm on. So as kind of a final step to creating the cards, I would want to uh, data merge this little button to create a merged document of all my records. And it's going to create a single record with a page for each of the images. So it's going to take a second to process. And then we it opens up a brand new file. So we still have our um, original file here. But then now, now what we have is a file showing all of the pages. So if we look here, um, we can scroll through. I'll use my page down function and just see we've got all these different creatures. We're all made in a matter of, um, I don't know how long I've been talking, but in a matter of minutes. So, but not done yet because I still don't have images of these cards, right? If I look inside my um, um, data merge file, I'm going to make a new folder. So we're going to say new folder. I'm going to call these uh, card images. And if we go in here, the card images file is blank. So what I want to do is I want to file export. And I might want to export each of my cards as individual JPEGs um, so that I can create a print and play page down the road, for example. So if I go in here into my card images file, which is currently empty, I'm just going to call these um, cards version one. I'll just call them cards. Um, die in the dungeon cards, we'll call them. Okay, so what it does, we'll set the resolution to 300. That's a, a minimum resolution for most printers. Uh, and you could turn on or off bleed settings. I don't have a bleed on this card, but I should. And I'll click export. So what it's going to do, it's going to think for a second and it's going to process every single one of these pages as a separate image on my computer. And so if I show you that, um, we'll close this again, and you'll be able to see my browser, uh, hopefully my folder, there we go. So I'm gonna open up my folder, I'm gonna go into my data merge, sample, card images, and right now we only have one image, so why is that? Well, that is a good question. I ask myself, I'm going to do file, export, JPEG, and oh, right now I'm at a range of one. I actually want to do all pages. There we go. So if I do all pages, this should work out a little bit better. And now when I open that folder, you can see all of these images have suddenly been created. And so if I look through them, I can see. Uh, all these different cards are now made in a very short time frame. And then what can happen is anytime I want to change something, I can quickly save it and then export and rewrite over it. All right, I don't know how long this video took, but I was just excited to share it because this is going to save me tons of time when prototyping games and even when making file, final files for games instead of trying to replace and retype each word as a separate layer. 
um, I can actually design it all on a spreadsheet and have it convert into the template that I create. So if you have any questions about it, I'm still learning, but I thought this was super helpful to learn on my own, and I thought it might be relevant to create a card system for you as we went, just a, a whole new pretend card game. All right, as always, thanks for watching my videos, and have a great day.